Thank you very much for joining us for the Midday News today, Monday, the 24th of July, 2023. My name is Marco Kwakozi. Let's take a look at the stories making the headlines. Police officers allegedly assault a bus driver. A mining association challenges government not to hand sewage light to foreign investors. And in international news, a Kenyan family demand answers over police killing. And in sports news, South Africa loses their opening match at the FIFA World Cup. For details of these and other stories, join us shortly after this break. Hey, hey, join me, Amazing Katamanda, on the weekly gospel show for those exciting and interesting interviews with your favorite gospel And this time around, we are bringing to you entertainment news and the counter, as you guys are able to nominate your top three favorite music videos of the week. Remember, it's every Saturday at 10.45. You can also catch repeats every Monday at 10 hours. Coming to TV is not just another time. Another news in detail. A bus driver operating at Kulima Tower bus station has accused some police officers manning the central business district of harassment after allegedly beating him and snatching a 400 kwacha citing contravening of traffic rules. George Nkoti claims about five police officers pounced on him after he made a U-turn at a at affect, affect crossroads after Kulima Tower station and grabbed a 400 quarter from him. He has since appealed to government to keep the police officers operating from the central business district in check to avoid denting the name of the president due to the illegality they are committing. Zambia police officers have been stationed in Lusaka Central Business District since July 18, 2023 in the move to maintain sanity after vendors were removed from the streets. Police officers have continued to maintain their presence in the Central Business District, CBD, following the 18th July operation to remove street vendors and stop contravening by minibus drivers. But now some police officers operating at Afe Crossroads near Limatawa bus station have been accused of harassment by a bus driver operating in the station. George Cote claims he was beaten by five police officers who also grabbed a 400 kwacha from him after he allegedly contravened traffic rules at this spot. <laughs> Mr. Koti says police officers pursued him back into the station and went with his minibus, which he later picked up and reported the matter to the police. This reporter went to the spot where the alleged U-10 occurred and found police officers stopping minibuses from engaging in the vice. Lima Tower Drivers Chairperson Nicholas Banda, when contacted for a comment, promised to investigate and issue a comprehensive statement later. Police spokesperson Leia Monga says police will investigate the incident as not even a police officer is allowed to take the law in his or her hands. We'll investigate that matter and see whether 
education is governing against officers are true or not. And if you find that, if you find that officers really committed that uh, atrocity, then there will be plenty of action will be taken against them. Because we have said, if someone commits an offense, you have to so, so, supposed to be on a charge sheet, which will actually give him seven days to decide whether to pay there and then, or after seven days, if they don't agree with the, the allegation, then it goes, the matter goes to court. No one is allowed to with the jury and the, and the court, at, I mean, the, the arrests and the court at the same time. Camnet News, Afya Skaptula in Lusaka. Residents of Nkongkwa village in Chisamba district of the central province have called for investigations on how the over 200,000 kwacha allocated for the construction of a bridge in the area has been utilized. In an interview with Comnet News, the residents have complained that the quality of the works that have been done at the bridge are below par and the materials used are not of good quality. Meanwhile, senior headman in Konkwa says the bridge will likely be washed away during the rainy season due to the poor workmanship, a further calling on the relevant authorities to follow up the matter with the urgency it deserves. Here's a report. This is the state of the Kawaya Bridge in Nkongwa village of Chisamba district in Central Province few months after the bridge was constructed using the 2022 Constituency Development Funds CDF. The villagers in this area are however not happy with the quality of works that have been done, fearing that the bridge might be washed away during the rain season, hence calling on the authorities to do an investigation to ascertain what are alleged to have been allocated for the construction of this bridge has been utilized. So it was a book stone that was used and it has ground to powder and already it is, uh, it is showing uh, potholes on top there. And then uh, when the water comes, it will wash away leaving only uh, bare culverts. And that will shorten the lifespan of uh, the culverts. Now, all the people who are in the world are in the world. Now, the government is in the world. The government is in the world. The government is in the Meanwhile, village headman in Konkwa says the bridge was constructed using small steel bars and wonders why the road which is also in a poor state, has not been worked on despite an assurance that over 200,000 was released for the construction of the bridge as well as part of the road which he says becomes impassable during the rain season. Oh no! Mbuma kasele nsa pa bridge tatuna kukondwa. So pato uwa nikai paka ya woro 30 million njia kaya hao. Ndala mashuonse tatushuwe ni kusha kaya. Bridge yona mwesha, weshi kupima bridge wa kesi wakai pime, ila kuchaya yoro wantu chino chaka. Para kufuwa wantu banji. Ndala mwesha, so wakatu ite kwa mba CDF nangwa, CDF nangwa yo, hai aswa. 250 million tutumu wambila bridge. Meanwhile, in order to ease movements, community members in this area also contributed resources for the construction of this footbridge, which the community fears may not stand the test of time, hence calling on the government to also consider allocating resources for the construction of a better bridge at this crossing point before the onset of the rain season. Meanwhile, Mungule Ward Councillor Kelvin Mutende, when contacted, says the bridge was done at a cost of 200 and 47,000 kwacha and states that he has on several occasions engaged the community to write to the Ward Development Committee on which projects they wish to see in their area but that no one has so far submitted any minutes for their meetings. When the, when, when the, when the time the, the bridge was uh, completed, I have not received any report. So I'm getting this uh, report from you. Mm. So uh, in this case, 
I think I'll ask the, the engineers from Chibombo to go on the ground and do the, the maybe to, do, to, do, to, to monitor the, the Osnan uh, project. Pudis Chota reporting for Kamni TV News. The Zambia Compulsory Standard Agency has confiscated assorted products failing within the scope of compulsory standards on the Copper Belt, Northwestern Province and Ruapura Provinces, valued at 490,000 kwacha. ZCSD Head of Communications, Brian Hatioka, says the confiscated products were supplied on the market in the three provinces without authorization from the agency as acquired by the Compulsory Standards Act number 3 of 2017. Mr. Hatioka says among the products are confiscated include fruit flavored drinks, opaque beer, portable spirits, mini meal, bottled water, among other products. Meanwhile, the agency has also seized six bales of textile products containing undergarments in Lusaka province valued at 30,000 kwacha. Mr. Hatioka says this happened on July 19th, 2023, as ZS, ZCSA officers were conducting their routine op inspections in Makeni and Tawama townships of Lusaka. He says officers came across a light truck of loading bells of used textile products along a certain road in Tawama and that at the point at that point the officers got interested and proceeded to verify what was contained in the bells. The Emerald and Semi-Precious Stones Mining Association of Zambia has challenged government and not to hand sugilite mines to foreign investors. In an interview with Cabinet News Association President Victor Kalesha says local people have the capacity to mine the minerals if well organized. He, Mr. Kalesha further says the country is currently benefiting less from emerald mining which was given to foreign investors when the local people also have the capacity to mine emeralds. He says sugilite is one of the most expensive minerals on the market and that the country can benefit more if the sector is to be left to the locals. That is um, remaining is to define geologically the extent of uh, the sugilite uh, that we have in the country and in which areas uh, they are found. But in terms of investment, as a country, we are able to do that on our own. Uh, we don't need to bring in a foreign investor to come and mine this sugilite. We've been losing out enough. We've lost out on those that have been mining and been taken away uh, illegally. We have lost out. So the remaining that we have in the ground as, def as we define it, let's go into for it as a government or give a local investor so that we have resources remaining in the country. And uh, I think uh, the, uh, when we discover these minerals, let's not always um, feel the people that discover them are illegals. These are people that should be heroes and uh, documented that you should be able even to name some of these mines behind those people. So the sugilite being discovered and as it is, we are taking too long. Why are we taking too long to make a decision? We already have it. Let's put in local investors, equipment, put in national service with equipment. Let's mine it ourselves so that we earn resource out of uh, that uh, God-given resource. The National Action for Quality Education in Zambia, NAKES, has proposed the establishment of a bank by teachers in order to avoid the current pun punishing bank interest rates on loans. NAKES Executive Director Aaron Tansa says since commercial banks and other financial institutions are offering poverty-inducing loans, 
there is urgent need for the teachers in Zambia to take advantage of their big number to quickly and collectively establish a bank that would offer teachers at 5% interest or less. Mr. Chansa says three quarters of teachers in Zambia are highly indebted largely because of contracting very expensive loans meant for furthering their teaching qualifications. He says if government allows the formation of each of the 135 public service teachers contributing a 450 quarter through the payroll, more than 60 million quarter would be raised and Zambia would be the second country in Africa to set up a financial institutions for cheaper loans for teachers. In order for teachers to avoid contracting very expensive uh, loans, uh, National Action for Quality Education in Zambia is today proposing um, establishment of a, a bank uh, for teachers, by teachers, uh, so that um, uh, we can uh, assist our teachers to get out of um, uh, high indebtedness. We are aware that uh, most of our teachers uh, became indebted uh, as a result of getting loans, these very expensive loans, poverty inducing loans, uh, in order for them to acquire higher qualifications. Um, and we also know that uh, uh, when government allows this idea to, uh, to, to, be, to be born, we are going to uh, allow uh, teachers to contribute even 450 and the uh, raising more than 60, 60 million quarter um, as capital for starting this uh, in, uh, important um, uh, facility. We are also aware that countries like Kenya, countries like uh, Australia are running uh, financial institutions for, for teachers and this is the only way we are going to allow uh, teachers to, uh, to borrow for investments, borrow and uh, to repay these uh, very expensive ones that they are servicing today. On that note, we break for some commercials. We have more in international sports news. Don't go away. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Welcome back and now in international news, at least 35 civilians have been shot dead by police in Kenya this month during protests over new taxes and rising cost of living. 27-year-old Douglas Kalisinga is thought to be one of them. Relatives say he was shot, on, he was shot while at work pushing a handcuffs of water cans and was not taking part in demonstrations. Now here is a roundup of international news. At least 35 civilians have been shot dead by police in Kenya this month during protests over new taxes and the rising cost of living. 27-year-old Douglas Kalasinga is thought to be one of them. Relatives say he was shot on Thursday while at work pushing a handcart of water cans and wasn't taking part in demonstrations. We want action to be taken against the police officer who was shooting randomly, he says. Why would they shoot at people, even those carrying water? those going about their business. When you meet the police, should they help you or kill you? 
If he was demonstrating, the police should have dispersed them. Why would you shoot at somebody's child? What will happen to your child tomorrow? President William Ruto has praised police actions, but many Kenyans accuse him of making life unbearable with taxes on fuel and other essentials and rising food costs. Police should not come to shoot people, he says. They should arrest suspects and investigate. Right now, people are struggling to survive. People are suffering because of hunger and the cost of living is high. If I decide to go and demonstrate, I'm not going there to throw stones at anyone or steal. Why should you profile me? <laughs> Human rights organizations have expressed concern over the police actions and urged their watchdog to prosecute officers found guilty. Rescue teams resume work despite the rain and strong winds. They had halted efforts on Thursday due to bad weather. The hilltop location and tough terrain are hindering operations. The height of the site is around 950 metres from the ground and the trek from here is about 2.8 kilometres. We're also facing the huge challenge of not being able to carry heavy equipment, which is why everything is being done manually. Several bodies were recovered after Thursday's landslide, about 60 kilometers from Mumbai. Houses have been flattened and streets submerged, and dozens are still missing. Heavy rains have also battered the neighboring state of Gujarat. Some areas are submerged, isolating villages. Rising water levels in dams and overflowing rivers are raising concerns about flooding. The water has entered our houses and everything is damaged. There is water everywhere, inside shops and in houses. We have suffered a lot of losses as the water came suddenly from the nearby area. Monsoon rains remain well below normal at the start of the season in June. But heavy rains this month have led to flooding across several regions. In the last two weeks, capital New Delhi witnessed the worst flooding in more than 40 years. And it's not over yet, as officials are forecasting heavy rain in the coming days. Amikulsum Sharif, Al Jazeera. And now in sports news, under pouring rain in the New Zealand capital, Elested jumped highest and squeezed the ball home to save her team's blushes after they were left frustrated by, South Af by African champions uh, for much of the opening hour of the game. The result left the third-ranked Swedes top of their group before Italy and Argentina play their opener in Auckland this morning. South Africa, ranked 54th, were looking for their first World Cup win on their second appearance at the tournament, having exited in group stages in 2019 without picking a point. Without picking a point. And to end the news, we now look at the stories that made the headlines. A police officers allegedly assault a bus driver. A mining, a mining association challenges government not to hand suji light to foreign investors. Kenyan family demands answers over police killing. And South Africa loses their opening match at the FIFA World Cup. Before we go, we now look at today's covenant verse of the day coming from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 21, and it reads, And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. That's it. That's all we could accommodate for our midday news. But don't go away because up next is the lunch cafe. For immediate coverage of any breaking or latest news in Zambia and around the world on Kamnet Television, call the numbers on your screen.
television, bringing to your screens fair news, impartial news, credible and reliable news all the time. Get the whole truth on Camnet World News. television, not just another channel. It's time! Kamli TV brings to you an exciting kid show called My Creation. Join me, Sarah Chandamanga, as I get to interact with kids with special skills and talents between the age range of 9 to 17. This show will come to you every Saturday at 13.30 on Kamli TV, not just another channel. Seko, <laughs> Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Good afternoon, uh, viewers. My name is Aida Chama from National Food and Nutrition Commission. I'm the acting head of Nutrition Education and Communication Unit. So today I'm here to give the tips on nutrition. Of course, when we talk about nutrition, it's like everyone knows what to eat. But we are trying to emphasize and put are the right uh, uh, things that are supposed to be known by the general public. So today we are going to talk about uh, dietary diversity. So dietary diversity, first of all, I want to uh, uh, define it. It is uh, the number of food groups or food items that one consumes. It can be an individual or at household level. So dietary diversity, as I have said, uh, it's the number of uh, foods that one consumes. And you'll be able to tell by uh, trying to identify, because food as it is, there's no one food that has all the nutrients in one. So what you see is that uh, foods are categorized according to the nutrients that they contain in them, the major nutrients. So uh, dietary diversity, as I have said, most times it's measured at household or individual level. And then what I can say that household uh, um, dietary diversity or individual dietary diversity, it also helps us to know the quality of the food or the diet that we are consuming as human beings to keep us in good health. Uh, I have already talked about, uh, mentioned actually, that uh, the foods that we are consuming are coming from the food groups. The foods themselves have been categorized into food groups. 
So these food groups that we are talking about, like for Zambia, we have adopted the six food groups. I know different countries have got different food groups, but Zambia has decided to adopt the six for the reasons that we need our Zambian population to be kept in good health. So, uh, like I said, uh, the first group, it's the cereals, uh, starch, uh, starch roots and tubers. That's the first group. The second group is vegetables. The third group is fruits. The fourth group is uh, fish, insects or animal source foods. Then uh, the fifth group is dairy and dairy products. Then the last group that we are going to see is legumes, pulses, and nuts. Now, looking at the six food groups, let's start with uh, the, the one that I started with, that is, is the, 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 the cereals, starch roots, and tubers. If you look at the majority of Zambians, the food that we are eating, actually the staple food, the nshima, it's made out of the foods that are coming from this group. I'll give an example of the people in Wapula province. You find that they consume a lot of cassava, and they, even the nshima, it's made out of cassava. So this uh, type of nshima, or type of food, it is coming from this food group that we are saying. It's a, it's a, a cereal, it is coming from the food group called cereal, starchy uh, roots and tubers. Uh, we can give many more examples. Millet is another, which is coming from this food group. If you talk of other foods, you know Zambia is segmented into provinces. If you go to Western province, you find that they consume a lot of rice. And rice also is coming from this main, uh, one of the food groups that we have. So uh, this group actually provides the main source of energy that our body requires. Of course, there are other minor trace nutrients that you might find in this group. We have uh, uh, like iron can be found in uh, this group. We have other nutrients that you can also benefit when you consume rice, when you consume cassava, when you consume maize, even the maize, the, the, the popular maize that we consume in form of uh, breakfast, roller meal, uh, mugaiwa, but the best being mugaiwa among all those that I've just mentioned, you'll find that uh, the whole milled, uh, uh, milled meal from maize will give you uh, a lot of benefits in terms of the nutrients that the body requires. So I have talked more of uh, one group, then I move to the second group, which is vegetables. I know most of us, we are full of uh, consuming foods such as uh, um, rape, cabbage, and we neglect our own indigenous local food, uh, vegetables. If you look at the local vegetables, we have lumanda, we have uh, the bean leaves, that is chimpapila in our local, some of the local languages that I know. Others might call it differently. And then we also have pumpkin leaves, of which I know most of the people, they like go to Mateveto. And Mateveto, that's where a lot of people enjoy our uh, local Zambian cuisines. And uh, this is one interesting uh, uh, um, group of foods. Uh, that we are calling the vegetables. So there are several vegetables that we are encouraging Zambians to consume for you to meet the dietary diversity. And then the other group that I can talk about in this case, uh, it's the fruits. Fruits, again, there are several in Zambia. But what has turned out to be a lot of people, especially in, in urban setup, who would like to consume the fruits that I imported into the country. If you find in a masao, you wouldn't want to buy the masao and consume them. If you look at the masao, they are quite rich in vitamin C. This group actually provides a lot of minerals and um, uh, vitamins, equally like the vegetable group. 
So the two, they complement in terms of minerals and vitamins. They are quite uh, adequate. Uh, they are quite in adequate amounts in these two groups: the, the vitamins, the vegetables, and the fruits groups. So the fruits that I want to talk about, we have even the masuku, the local uh, uh, wild loquats. The masuku, a lot of people when they are in season, and we are privileged as a country, we have fruits that are seasonal. You will find that during rain season, there's a, a fruit that is available. And when it comes to dry season, there are other fruits again which are available. Baobab fruit, that dry fruit which looks brownish, it's more common in the eastern side of Zambia. You'll find that that's a very good fruit, also very rich in vitamin C. So all these indigenous and local available fruits, they all belong in this group that we are calling fruits group, food group. The fourth group is fish, insects, and animal source fruits, foods. So in here, in short, we are saying this is uh, the group that caters for the animal protein. So you find that the animal protein, name it, if we talk of insects, we'll talk of caterpillars, we'll talk of uh, um, um, probably grasshoppers. All those are the foods that will appear. Any insect, edible insect that you know within the region where a lot of Zambian live, actually these are some of the foods that you can benefit from and have uh, adequate amounts of uh, uh, proteins from them. That is the first class protein, the animal protein. I will quickly go to the dairy group, food group, where you will find the dairy and dairy products. Meaning in this group we have a lot of uh, milks, different types of milks. I know in Zambia the most available milk is the cow's milk. But uh, there are certain regions where we can find even the goat's milk. We are saying we can consume the goat's milk. It will provide uh, uh, certain nutrients like calcium apart from the protein. The calcium milk is a rich source of uh, calcium. And then there are different types of milks that uh, we find within the country and we are saying that they all fall into this. If you go to the southern part of Zambia, you'll find that uh, in southern province, actually they consume a lot of sour milk. So these are some of the foods that we are encouraging uh, Zambians to consume. They are easily accessible and they are readily available within our country. If you are, you are, you, because food groups actually, they contain a lot of foods in them. So it's not only one food that you find in there. You can like dairy and dairy products, even cheese. Uh, in some areas, yes, uh, southern is popular with sour milk, but of course now on the shelf you can find cheese. Those who can afford cheese, it's one good source that you can find actually in the, uh, uh, on, the on the shelf and be able to buy uh, such type of a food. And then the last but not the least, I'm just itemizing them so that we know the six food groups. It's the legumes, pulses, and nuts group. If you look at this food group, as the word entails, it actually comprises of most of the foods that like beans, we have the peas, we have a lot of uh, ground nuts, so all those type of foods, they fall into this category of a food group that I've just mentioned, which is legumes, pulses, and nuts. So it's very rich in proteins and it also provides a lot of vitamins and minerals. So this is how Zambia has adopted the six food groups. If one consumes foods on a daily basis from all the six food groups, then we are assured that we are getting a quality diet. It be at household level or at an individual level, then it means that we are, uh, we, our diets that we are consuming are quality and we are promoting good health and nutrition. Thank you.
so that was our nutrition corner. We just thought of giving you something different on uh, the lunch uh, cafe. And now we'll be giving you the nutrition corner as our first uh, segment just to help us understand how we should eat what we eat and how we should monitor what we eat that is one we'll be calling the nutrition corner moving on let's get to the uh, amazing stories and um, interestingly this particular segment gives us stories that are happening around us as our reporters are in the fields and giving us um, uh, the stories that we expect to see in our 19 hours uh, bulletin 1930 bulletin this evening so what we now have to do is just get some glimpse of what the work, uh, our, um, our reporters are working on in the field. Let's quickly get to the first story. This one comes uh, from um, the Lusaka City Council. It says Lusaka Mayor Tirando Chitangara has called on various stakeholders to come on board and help keep in keeping the city clean. Now speaking when she received the donation of heavy duty bins from home, of Living Brands Company towards the agenda of keeping Lusaka clean. Ms. Chitangara said the Keeping the City Clean campaign should not only be left to the council alone, but that all must take part. She says the removal of street vendors from the CBD is one of the measures of promoting public health. Let's have a look at this. This is very important for me here and the DPS, our uh, uh, Deputy Permanent Secretary, to come here and witness such a huge contribution. The contribution, the donation that we received today is worth over 250000 I understand. And these are beans. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, for this, I think it's so important that we have as many stakeholders to come on board for a good cause. I think it's just about time that we kept our city clean. And uh, you know very well that we've had uh, a very big um, public health challenge in the city. So this is not meant to just um, uh, chase the vendors or the marketeers away, it's to safeguard their public health as well. Like we have said, the market spaces are there and we are here to provide the service so that you can get your market space all over the district. Let it be City Market, let it be Kanyama, let it be uh, Chawama. We will provide those spaces. But at the same time, we have these bins now. That means that uh, we all have to be clean. At least we can all throw our, our, our waste, our garbage into these bins. And please, let's not vandalize because um, this destination has come at the right time and worth quite a lot of money. 250000 is not small money. So let's not vandalize these beans. Let's take care of these beans. And I'm sure you will start seeing more beans around the city, uh, bus stops and so on. Let's not vandalize. Let's also be the champions of keeping our city clean. It's also, it's just not for the local authority or for government. You, the people, are the government. So support this very, very good cause. Isn't it? Thank you very much. So that is about the beans that have been donated to the Lusaka City Council uh, just in helping uh, keeping the city clean. We do expect uh, the story at 1930 uh, in full as we um, await for that particular uh, bulletin. Now moving on, another interesting story that we are hoping to see uh, in our evening news today uh, in a quest to keep uh, to speed up the CDF project construction. Uh, by uh, contractors, um, Chitambo Local Authority has uh, scaled up projects monitoring and uh, to ensure uh, compliance by uh, contractors uh, to the spec specifications 
assigned with the local authorities uh, to carry out uh, various community projects. Now, the council chairperson, Mr. Brian Mwewa, and the council secretary, Mr. Muiche Mudala, toured CDF projects to appreciate their statuses and Misumba Health Post, a project constructed using 2022 CDF displacement amounting to 305,000 quarter uh, was the first stop. Now the duo expressed satisfaction at the rate and the materials used in the construction of the health post uh, in Talilo Ward, which, which has alerted the community and the duo uh, were assured by the director of the company, uh, Duncan Investments Limited, uh, to hand over the project to the local authority next month. Let's have a look at this. I, by all means, in that twice I'm going to have fishing. If I tell you that on Saturday I was here, come ask me. The fee never when I sign, and today's what? Do you expect to give him, you, him to give you another contract? We cannot allow him to let us get fee cancer if you don't have So I'm going to supervise about to make one. To make one, I'm going to have a meeting with him to have another contract. Because if we're passing a fee to buy him here. No. He's right. These are two separate contracts. You cannot be moving our own few kunabambi, kunabambi. No wonder we paid you. Mm. These are separate contracts with two separate accounts. So imwe, we have to make a saving by using the same workers, you are shooting yourselves in the foot. Because that's we're not we're in a hurry. Yeah. We cannot work purpose here. So I'm going to take my poku, I don't want to work with So I'm going to take my interest in the project. I'm going to take my interest in the project. So that is about Chitambo Council and the uh, CDF projects that are underway and uh, that's the council secretary and of course the council chairperson uh, inspecting those uh, particular projects. We do expect that particular story also at 1930 in detail. Now uh, the other story comes from um, Luangeni and it says Luangeni member of parliament Moses Moyo has welcomed the early distribution of farming inputs under the 2020-2024 farming uh, farmer Import Support Program, FISP. Now, Mr. Moyo says the early commencement of the import distribution in the country shows the seriousness President Haga in the Hijrema and his government attached to making Zambia food secure. Now, speaking in an interview with Zanis, the Rwangeni lawmaker said uh, President Hijrema wants local farmers to take full advantage of the country's geographical position to grow more food which would allow the which will allow them to export surplus uh, food to the neighboring countries now mr moyo who is a second deputy speaker of the national assembly uh, has since appealed to farmers in his constituency to heed to the president's call he has employed farmers in the constituency to exercise patience regarding the country's state of the economy as government worked on strategies meant to, to, stabilize, to stabilize it following the external debt restructuring. So that's a story coming from Longeni uh, where the member of parliament Moses Moyo was um, encouraging farmers uh, to take uh, the farming seriously as uh, we uh, see the early distribution of our farming imports. So that's about it on this segment, uh, which we call the Emerging Stories segment. Those are the stories that we expect to see in our 1930 uh, evening news. So we do expect more of the stories on that particular uh, bulletin. Now we get into the next segment, which is the Forgotten Stories segment. But before we do that, let's quick, take a quick break. 
it's time! Kamli TV brings to you an exciting kid show called My Creation. Join me, Sarah Chandamanga, as I get to interact with kids with special skills and talents between the age range of 9 to 17. This show will come to you every Saturday at 13.30 on Kamli TV, no just another channel. Thank you very much. Now, getting into the forgotten stories, on this day in 2020, the Health Minister, Tidaru Chirufia, had announced that 15 members of parliament had tested positive to COVID-19. And ZRP President Wright Munsona had praised the government for not locking down the country in the spirit of the rise of COVID-19 cases. Let's have a look at this. Make an announcement that in showing leadership, and political will at the apex of the political leadership and parliament. An exercise was carried out where members of parliament were tested for COVID-19, including members of staff. Results have been availed and 15 members of parliament have tested positive to COVID-19. All these members of parliament have been contacted and being isolated in various facilities and those who require further therapy are being transferred to COVID centers. We want to thank the management at the National Assembly for the leadership shown, for the political will, for advocating for a high impact intervention in the control of COVID by making it possible for us to test members of parliament and the staff. This will not only enable us to manage those who are positive, but it will also help, to help us stem the spread, possible spread, uh, to constituents. In the last 24 hours further, we have recorded 154 new cases of COVID-19 out of 835 tests done. And this brings our cumulative number of cases to 3,856. The new cases are characterized as follows. 114 from community screening in Osaka. Kawe, Kitwe, and Ndola. Breaking down the 114, 70 are from Osaka, 29 Kawe, 12 Kitwe, and Ndola, 3. Then screening in our various health facilities, we picked up 2 in Chingola, 16 in Osaka, and 9 in Kitwe. And then those who are picked through contact tracing in Osaka were 11. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zambia, Dr. Edgar Chakalongo, and the Cabinet for not locking down this country as a result of the upswing okay, of the coronavirus pandemic in this country and indeed in other parts of the world. We feel this is a progressive and well thought out move. Uh, we say so that because in as much as the uh, pandemic is becoming a menace. At the end of the day, we need to strike a balance as a nation. Because if we lock down this economy, uh, again, that can hit the economy big time, such that we may slide maybe into, the, into a recession. But we don't want that to happen, because we are going to lose a lot of jobs for our people, and the businesses will come to, to, to a grinding halt. And we don't really want that. So we have to strike a balance. And what the cabinet has done is the best thing. Not to lock down the economy while we are keeping a watch, okay, an eye on the coronavirus. I believe we can manage. If we just adhere to health advice from Minister of Health, and I must commend Dr. Chifia, they are doing a commendable job informing the country and doing what human possible anyone can do. So the best thing is to do is to keep watch on the coronavirus and to advise us as Zambians 
to keep to adhere to health advice and that way we are going to go through because locking down definitely is not a thing it's not a good thing because it will hit us even more because instead of us dying of corona alone we will start now dying of hunger and poverty and we don't want that as a nation i'm sure the economists and the, those who have done a bit of economics they are able to understand the view of this so we commend government for not locking down the economy until probably such a time when we are convinced that this is not manageable but as of now this is manageable if we just adhere we start masking sanitizing i mean adhering to health health advice we will pull through Thank you very much. So that's a story from 2020. Now let's move on to 2021. Uh, in 2021, as we approach the, uh, the August uh, 12 general elections, uh, Inspector General of Police Kakuma Kanganja had directed police uh, to be firm as regards uh, political violence. Now, um, the movement for a national transformation had aged the police to remain professional and ensure that they applied the law fairly. Let's have a look at this. UP and the cadres are reported to have attacked four women who they assaulted and robbed some shop owners of their money and properties. All this is pure thuggery and should not be left to continue. We have time and again advise politicians to stop eulogizing criminals in the name of politics, but it seems the advice has been falling on hard rock. I'm once again directing all police commanders in all provinces, including those in operations deployed to police elections, to be firm and ensure that all this public misconduct is brought to a halt, especially during this period when we are approaching the poor day. No one should watch violence being perpetrated under their watch without any action being taken. All officers have been given policing equipment to be used to quell any public misconduct and the legal framework within which to operate. Hence, political cadres should not be allowed to carry their day in abrogating the law. In a constitution of democracy, there is no one who is above the law. The constitution of the republic is the organic law and mother of all laws in the country. The Public Order Act applies to every citizen and a president is elected from among citizens. And in a democracy, what you require is fairness in the electoral process. What President Lungu did is unacceptable. To go to Mtendere and have a road show and the public exposed to COVID-19, that is not the way to implement in an election the Public Order Act. And this is where, as opposition political parties, this is where we have said that the police must remain professional. It is sad to hear that the police can give such a position that the president is not uh, accountable to the laws that apply to the Public Order Act and the running mate. What does that give now to the whole electoral process? It means that which other law or which other laws are they going to say they don't subscribe to? It is an unfortunate statement to make and we condemn it as movement for national transformation in the strongest sense.
So that's a story there from a 2021. 20, Moving on in the same year, 2021, Dr. Shimbakambi had spoken about his ambition as regards uh, being president of the country. Let's have a look at this. Former opposition leader Chishimba Kambri has claimed that his ambition of one day becoming a leader of this nation still stands at 50-50 as he cannot refuse or accept of having those thoughts. However, he is of the view that if he has never been ordained by God to run this country, others will do so. I would say yes or no. I am not yet decided because uh, now I find a situation where uh, I've come to believe that uh, uh, leadership comes from God. And if God uh, thinks uh, that I can be, so be it. But if God has never <laughs> ordained me or uh, you know, picked me as one of the people that can rule Zambia, others will, will do it. He clarifies that his focus right now is to ensure that he gathers all the support he can for the Patriotic Front Party in order to ensure that they return office after 12 August general elections. What is critical at the moment is to put our heads together and help the PF to make sure that uh, we govern uh, properly. That's my preoccupation, is to make sure that if there are any mistakes that I saw, if there are any new ideas I can bring to the table, then this is the right time to combine with the leadership that is there and uh, move the country forward. On the 1st of May 2021, Former opposition leader of the National Democratic Congress Party, Dr. Kambuli, announced his decision of going back to the Patriotic Front Party after leaving his own party on account that he wanted to campaign for President Lungu. Meanwhile, Dr. Kambuli says there's need to ensure that the mining business is in the hands of Zambians, adding that certain policies in the sector need to change to become favorable enough for Zambians to benefit. The way to go from now in terms of the mining uh, uh, business is to make sure that the mining business is in the hands of Zambians. If we need to raise about uh, a billion dollars to run uh, uh, Mopani, all we need to do is that government must, like they've, they've uh, gotten the full shares from Mopani, they should do th float those shares to the stock exchange so that the Zambian people can, can buy the shares. For instance, you target five million Zambians to buy shares in, in, in Mopani and you just say each Zambian pay about a thousand kwacha. How much are we going to raise? Who we'll raise enough money to run the, the mining companies and the, and the mining companies will be in the hands of the Zambians. Yes, we need uh, a direct foreign investment, but we should not give them 90% shares, 100% uh, shares, no, for the natural resources like mining. What we need is to give them maybe 50% and the other 50% uh, uh, maybe 20% goes to government and 30% of the shares are floated on the Lusaka Stock Exchange in order to raise capital to run the, the mining company. That is the way forward. And then this issue of less uh, dollars on the market will be a thing of the past because... Uh, Miriam Kemba, reporting for Kamne TV News. Thank you very much. So those are the stories we thought we could remind you of uh, those that the stories that happened uh, some two or three years ago, just to refresh our minds and uh, see where we have come from as a country. Now moving on, we now get into our interview segment and we are honored this afternoon uh, because we do have uh, Uni Tools and we have the president, uh, Mr. Paul Chipimo, who is um, the Uni Tools executive president. And we also have Mr. Herbert Kamboi, who is the Director of Technical and Research, just to help us discuss issues in the education sector. Uh, Mr. Chpimo is on my far left, and um, he is here as uh, President of the um, uh, Union. Uh, Mr. Chpimo, thank you very much for making it uh, to our cabinet. Welcome to this interview. Thank you so much. Good afternoon and good afternoon, viewers. Next to Mr. Chipimo is Mr. Herbert um, Kamboi, 
uh, who is director technical and research. Mr. Kamboy, thank you very much for making it to come. Let's go come to the interview. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, viewers. Let's uh, start with you, uh, President. Uh, firstly, briefly, um, tell us about UNITOOS. Thank you so much. The United States Union of Zambia is a labor uh, union, specifically in the education sector. Mm -hmm. uh, we were registered in 2020 as the sixth union in the education sector. For the sake of the public, education sector now has uh, eight unions mm -hmm. representing the over 100,000 teachers in this country. Mm -hmm. Now, um, let's quickly get into it now, the issue of the welfare of teachers in the country. We have seen that the government uh, did strike a debt restructuring deal with our, our foreign debtors. Um, how, what is the impact of this uh, development as regards the education sector and, and the teachers themselves? Uh, the issue of debt um, has been uh, a very big problem in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, for the sake of uh, uh, viewers, just to remind ourselves, we realize that over the years, our foreign debt, as well as the uh, local debt, has been rising. Mm -hmm. And the impact is that um, government has been remaining with uh, just the, um, a small portion of money to share among its um, very important sectors including education. Mm -hmm. Now, to have reached this level where we now have a situation where we can have our debt restructured, it's a plus to the country. I must acknowledge that it is a temporal measure. Uh, it doesn't tell that uh, we're not going to pay the debt. We've not been forgiven. Mm -hmm. uh, the terms, of course, allow us to have a breather. And that is a plus to us because government will have now more resources to channel to sectors such as education. Mm -hmm. So it is our hope that uh, with this breather, government will be able to uh, channel more resources to the education sector. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's talk about the uh, teacher recruitment. We um, did see last year uh, government employed a huge, was it 30, over 30,000 teachers? And uh, this year they announced that they are going to recruit uh, slightly uh, around 4,000 um, teachers. Um, what does this mean to the sector? Um, it's a good move. Mm -hmm. um, as a country, we still need more teachers. We have more schools. We have increased the um, uh, number of uh, enrollment in terms of learners. You know that we are now implementing the um, education for all. So there's free education. Uh, it tells you that more and more learners are being absorbed mm -hmm. in our schools. And that puts pressure on the teachers. So the move by government to basically try and be, um, employ more teachers, it's a welcome uh, move. Mm -hmm. uh, this will lessen on the teacher pupil uh, ratio and ensure that uh, there's quality in terms of delivery. Um, we have a deficit. As a country, we stand at 80,000. If we are to be comfortable, meaning that government has to employ 80,000 teachers for all the schools to be catered for. So it is not possible that government can go ahead and employ 80,000 because of resources. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that government has indicated that they are going to employ 4,500 uh, is a good move mm -hmm. uh, for us. That provides employment for the country as well as the, it lessens on pupil teacher ratio. Mm. Yeah. Now, what do you make of the plight of, of teachers across the country? Um, the number of issues that teachers are facing, mm -hmm. uh, some of them are related to um, human resource, others are structural in terms of housing, Infrastructure, of course, if you go to some of the schools, um, environment in education plays a major role mm -hmm. uh, in terms of delivery of these lessons. So if teachers are placed in institutions where infrastructure is not okay, and basically it puts them off, uh, including the learners. So in terms of uh, the plight of teachers, um, the unions, 
wish that government can do more. Mm -hmm. Yes, we want to thank government, the current government, of course, that uh, they've been intentional from day one in trying to solve these issues. But I think we need to push more so that it, they can attend to the uh, teacher's plight um, like yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you go into the rural areas, um, there are no housing uh, issues. Teachers have no accommodation. Um, I'll give an example of Chibombo. Most of the teachers that are teaching there are coming from Lusaka. So you'll have issues of absenteeism, uh, issues of late coming. So in order for the government to deal with these issues, they should also look at uh, infrastructure development in terms of housing. Mm -hmm. Then there are also issues related to debt. Government is owing teachers a lot of money in terms of um, uh, personal enrollment. Mm -hmm. uh, you talk about people go on leave, but they are never paid. So government has, over the years, um, been building this debt. So I wish it that government should be able to deal with those issues so that teachers remain motivated. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, other issues we can talk about, the current issues basically are upgrades. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you go on the ground and uh, ask what teachers are crying for, uh, upgrades. Teachers have gone to school, upgraded their qualification, but uh, they've not been upgraded into the right salary scale. Mm -hmm. Yes, that tells that they are being underpaid for the job that they are doing. So our appeal is that government should be able to look into this issue as soon as possible. Before, before we get into issues to do with um, um, the 2024 national budget, uh, what would you rather be done now? Uh, recruit more teachers, 4,000 teachers, or look into the plight of the teachers, such as housing, as you have put it, and, and other challenges that the teachers are faced with? Um, let me take you back. Uh, before, when government proposed that they are going to recruit 30,000 teachers, mm -hmm. um, unions proposed that um, before the new teachers could come on board, um, there were issues that we highlighted, that government should deal with the same issues. Mm -hmm. One of it is upgrade, uh, because um, there are issues of uh, salary scales. These teachers who were recruited, some of them, in terms of salaries, they are getting more money than the old teachers. Of course, that disparity is quite discouraging. Mm -hmm. So what we would prefer is a situation where government commits itself to deal with the current issues before going ahead to uh, add more numbers. But if government had the capacity to deal with the issues side by side, uh, we know that the numbers in terms of teachers is also important. Uh, for the fact that we have um, the issues that we have highlighted of pupil teacher ratio. But uh, dealing with the, the current issues in the education sector is equally important. So, if government had the capacity to deal with these issues side by side, would prefer that they, they do so. Mm -hmm. But our position is that government should first of all clear the outstanding issues mm -hmm. that are uh, really discouraging teachers. The current one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's get into the issues of the 2024 national budget. Um, in the next two months or so, uh, or slightly below two months, um, the Ministry of Finance will be presenting the budget to Parliament. Uh, what, as a union, would you love to see uh, in the 2024? What proposals would you love to make in the 2024 budget? Uh, thank you uh, on that issue. Our expectations as a union and uh, from the members are quite high, mm -hmm. arising from a number of factors. Um, hot, uh, the issue which is hot is the uh, cost of living. Cost of living currently is quite high. Uh, as stated by JCTR, for a family of five now, we are talking of over 9,000. Okay, and most uh, teachers, by and large, are around 5,000, 4,000, somewhere there. Mm. So the cost of living is quite high. So we want this budget to address the issue of the salary mm -hmm. so that uh, our teachers can have a living wage. Uh, currently, we cannot describe the salary as a living wage. 
because of the lot of carbs you know, on the salary. Uh, my friend has alluded to a number of challenges that are in our ministry. Mm -hmm. Probably the only ministry with quite a lot of challenges. And you would want government intentionally to pay more attention to edu education because there are big numbers there. Mm -hmm. uh, we we, we as alluded to the fact of upgrades. Uh, Mr. Fugeshe is a significant amount of money to move these teachers into their right uh, salary scales and, the, and the eventually get the correct salary. There are issues of, of establishment. We have um, hundreds of schools that are existing without uh, being gazetted, and there are schools existing without being upgraded. We need funding to education, so that these schools are gazetted, even establishment, so the teachers who are sitting there they get the correct salary. Mm -hmm. Work is being done. Learners are in these schools, results are coming out, uh, but these schools are not recognized, and the issue is funding. So what the, 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 the government, the Minister of Finance, to pay attention to these issues. They are, they are, they are quite huge and they are increasing um, every year. Expansion of establishment. We have schools that uh, have existed for a long time. Example, maybe Kablonga Boys. At the time of its establishment, maybe it required only 20 teachers. You go there today, there are 60 teachers. But there is a restriction on the number of staff to be paid. Maybe the current the situation is that the government is only paying for 20 teachers at that school. Meanwhile, there are 40 teachers. So we need to expand this establishment. And we need to, to be moving a bit faster. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we are very excited, especially with the debt restructuring. The space that the debt restructuring is bringing should address these issues quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it's, it's our desire that the, a, a number of issues open up, like pay points, you know. Uh, teachers are having different pay points. You find at this particular school, but uh, where teachers are drawing their salaries is, is somewhere else. A teacher is in uh, Kanyama, the pay point is in Wambara. The teacher is in Bowling, the pay point is in Kafue. So these anomalies require also a significant uh, amount of money so that we, we address personal monuments. Mm -hmm. Now probably the Ministry of Education is the only ministry which is all the huge sums of money to workers. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to pay the workers their living days. We need to pay the workers their repatriation. They are setting in allowance. There has been a movement by government and a significant amount of money has been given, but it's not enough. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a drop in the ocean. What is being paid is, is not visible, you know? So we need to increase so that more people are cleared, so that we start moving as a country. Mm -hmm. Eight unions in, in the education sector. Um, this is a sector that you have noticed that has so many challenges. Do you, uh, what, what responses do you get when you try to engage government on these challenges that you are faced with? Let's take, for instance, the issue of um, upgrading. Uh, upgrade, mm -hmm. the major issue. And very contentious on the ground. I mean, when we meet our teachers from time to time, the song is upgrade, mm -hmm. establishment. Uh, the government is coming out in terms of funding. That's why we are excited. We are excited um, about this debt restructuring. And our hope is that the process should speed, speed up. Mm -hmm. so that we, we get the actual benefits because uh, uh, all issues, even with the, eight, uh, the other eight unions, we are all speaking one language, that upgrade, upgrade, upgrade teachers. They mm -hmm. have the qualifications, they have the papers, and they, they are even placed in schools. Mm -hmm. We are not talking about the teacher who has a paper and they are at home. No, these are teachers who are even offering a service to the country. A teacher is teaching physics with a degree, but it's being paid a salary of a certificate order, a diploma order. So these are the real issues 
that would want the government to be specific, uh, upgrade establishment. These are key issues that we should unlock. If we, uh, everything was equal, let this thing be done as we move into 2024. Mm -hmm. We, we are very desirous that these things can be done and the government should begin to pay attention. I'm trying to understand the picture on the ground. Um, let's take for instance, you were employed in 1990. Uh, you had a certificate then. Then you uh, upgraded, you got your degree in, in primary school teaching. And then I'm employed in 2020, I have a degree. Uh, do, do you still remain? at the certificate where you were, uh, you, the one you were getting when you were employed, and I go straight to, to the degree? Yes, that, that's how it is. Um, I tell you, the moon is not good on the ground when it comes to upgrade. That's why our song, as the president has said, is upgrade. Mm -hmm. Yes, because teachers are discouraged. Here is the people we are teaching. Uh, with time, They've got in the higher qualification, which you have. Mm -hmm. But at that entry point, they place them in a higher salary scale than you. And you start teaching together. Where is the respect? Yeah. So teachers have, have lost that respect. And they are calling on the unions to pressure government to make sure that they look at this issue because it is indeed a demotivating factor. Mm. Yes, on the ground. Mm. Then, sad enough, a scenario I've given. Um, we have teachers who have upgraded uh, their qualification, but they end up retiring. They have been rendered in a service and they retire and they are paid their pension, they get their pension in the lower salary scale. It's quite painful. Uh, teachers spend a lot of money. Most of the teachers have upgraded using their hard earned money. Look at the suffering that they have pushed their families through. And to what benefit? So this is the cry on the ground that government should be moving quickly and correct the situation. Do we see light at the end of the tunnel as regards upgrades? Uh, definitely. Um, the good news that is the coming from government, we are very hopeful that these issues can be addressed. Mm -hmm. and the quicker the better. We are very, very hopeful. That's why we, like I said, we are very excited with the debt structure because the, uh, this is a process that will uh, enable this country to have access to more funds. Mm -hmm. So that's where our hope lies, uh, that the government should take this window, this opportunity to unlock these problems. We have hope mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, we have trust in this government that it can do more. It's doing more, but it can do can walk an extra mile mm -hmm. and uh, address these issues. What is your take uh, on the issue of uh, pay as you earn? Um, pay as you earn is uh, one of the many taxes that government collects. Um, it, it falls under income tax. Mm -hmm. And um, every employee is mandated, of course, to pay that tax. Um, our take is that um, looking at economical factors and the challenges that teachers and other workers are going through. Um, we, our wish is that government will be able to, um, there are two ways government can deal with this. Mm -hmm. It's either reduce on the percentage or simply increase on the threshold. Um, for us, we wish that government can go uh, this way of increasing the threshold. Why? It's because most of our teachers, the ones that we present, fall in the lower bracket. Um, they get lower salaries. By increasing the threshold, most of our teachers will be exempted. Mm -hmm. That's a plus on their income. Currently, we stand at uh, 4,800. And I wish that if you can even go to 6,000. So that at 6,000, 6, you are exempted from paying tax. Already, that's an automatic increase and more money in the pocket of the, of the workers. Mm -hmm. So we propose that government, even in this year's budget, I mean next year's budget, the, the threshold can be moved from the current 4,800 to about 6,000. 
Now, you did earlier um, recognize the issue of um, housing as one of the major problems that um, the teachers are faced with. Uh, can you give us a clear picture of this particular problem? Maybe I can come in on that one. Uh, the issue of housing in education is a quite a, maybe for lack of a better way, the alarming. Mm -hmm. Alarming in the sense that uh, the accommodation that we have for the teachers, I'm talking about the government accommodation, it's quite low. It's quite low. And our hope is that um, government should deliver it to come up with a policy to increase on the number of housing for the teachers. Like we saw it with our friends in the in the security wings, mm -hmm. where a significant number of housing was built for them. I think that policy should be extended to means of education in fairness, so that we address the, 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 uh, this problem. Uh, if you travel across this country, you cry in certain housing that uh, the teachers are occupying. And to make it even worse, the housing allowance being paid for our members, the teachers, is nothing to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, imagine a degree order getting 1,700. Mm -hmm. Okay. A diploma order, 1,100. Certificate order, 900 kwacha. I have my child who is at Apex University. A bed space is 900 kwacha. So, uh, we will not be exaggerating when we say these amounts are just for a bed space, maybe for a room in Lusa. Because mm. normal accommodation in Lusa should be about 4,000, 5,000. So, this is another area government should pay attention to. The, the housing, if we cannot move quickly to build more houses for teachers, can we increase on the housing allowance so that we have decent accommodation to these, to these uh, I would call them heroes and heroines for this country. They are the ones who are placing manpower uh, for, for this country. So we need to take care of them. So we even wonder how they are managing mm. in terms of accommodation. We wonder with this allowance. So this is a major issue that we strongly speak to that government should pay attention and begin to address. What, what direction do you feel that government should take as you guys are addressing this problem? As you have put it, uh, the current situation is not as good. It's not as good. I think uh, uh, from from what has been coming from government, maybe it's time also for all stakeholders. Mm -hmm. All stakeholders that uh, in, have interest in education should begin to be real and address this problem. Mm -hmm. Because we cannot leave it to government. Because government over the years has demonstrated that uh, um, the capacity is, is not enough. So all stakeholders that are interested in the education of the Zambian child, let me put it that way. Because at the end of the day, all of us must be looking at the child. So if we want a quality child, then we need all the stakeholders must come on board and begin to address the issue of accommodation for our teachers. Mm -hmm. Now, government did increase um, CDF uh, from 1.6 to 28.3 um, this year. Um, how do you think the education sector can tap into this, this money uh, for the benefit of especially the teachers in rural areas? Um, CDF, uh, already they are, uh, on, the, on the ground we are seeing the impact is having. Mm -hmm. um, a number of houses here and there have been constructed, plus on blocks, but we still feel it's not enough. Mm -hmm. Well, CDF has a lot of interest across a lot of, uh, uh, maybe let me say, the whole community. So to rely on the CDF alone, it will take years to solve this problem. We need just a policy. I think we, we strongly speak to a policy to begin to address accommodation of teachers. Mm -hmm. CDF should be one, just one of them, not a solution. 
it should be just one of them. But we need a very strong police on accommodation. Mm -hmm. When we employ, we are sending this teacher. Where is the teacher arriving to? It's very important. Where are we placing the teacher? In a grass touch house? Or just leave the teacher on the roadside and say you, you find your own accommodation? No. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are saying we need a strong police. As we place this teacher at this institution, uh, there must be shelter for this teacher to deliver quality service to the community and at the end of the day we produce a quality child. Mm -hmm. Now, um, as we come to the end of this interview, um, the issue of uh, teacher recruitment uh, and against um, the, the challenges that you have brought about, I did ask uh, uh, Mr. Kamboi, uh, which, what should be prioritised? Um, as I earlier mentioned, mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of problems that um, teachers are going through. Mm -hmm. um, we wish government that uh, could prioritize attending to a number of issues that teachers are going through. Mm -hmm. I think I'll just repeat on the, the challenges. The major issue for now, the bigger soul, is upgrade. Uh, let government uh, work on the issue of uh, infrastructure in schools. Let government be deliberate mm -hmm. on the issue of uh, accommodation. Let government be deliberate on the issue of dismantling the personal emoluments before we even start looking at uh, recruitment of teachers. I've already said that um, we need more teachers. But what are our priorities? We are just adding the numbers, but we are not solving the actual problem. That basically is it, demotivating to the saving teachers who are in numbers. Look at the uh, 30,000 who are recruited. I'll just cite an example. They are already confirmed. Mm -hmm. They are already confirmed. But look, when you go on the ground, the old teachers, they are those who are saving. Some of them, you even cry. Some of them have saved for 18 years. Just mere confirmation substantive confirmation as a teacher. Here is a new group that has come because laws have changed. Within three months, they are confirmed. But there's someone who has been saving for 10 years, over 10 years. So these are some of the issues that um, we are speaking to, that government should be able to address them because some of them don't even require money. It's just writing to these teachers that they've been confirmed before we have new teachers on board. Mm. Yes, government should attend to the current problems. Mr. President, uh, as we come to the end of this interview, um, what are your concluding remarks? Uh, in the first place, I want to appreciate Kamli TV for picking on us mm -hmm. as the United States of Zambia to present uh, our colleagues, the, 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 the teachers in the teaching fraternity. And uh, in our concluding remarks, we we want to thank government for the deliberate um, uh, efforts they are making towards education. I think we need to appreciate that significant amount of money this year. And uh, let me just say from the time this coming came into power, a lot of money has gone into educa education. But uh, as we have uh, said, uh, they are doing enough, but we need, they need to do more to begin to address all the issues that we have alluded to, the issues of upgrades, the issues of personal emoluments, the issues of accommodation, um, to name but just a few. We want a highly motivated teachers, effective teacher, who can deliver a quality child. We should not just be celebrating results. Mm -hmm. No, my child has gotten six points, my child is going to university. As we celebrate that child, let's also celebrate the teacher by taking care of the challenges that they are facing. Mm. I thank you so much. Mm. Mr. Kamboi, as we conclude this interview, and what are you concluding with that? Um, it basically, it's um, an appeal to the government uh, to quickly address um, issues uh, facing the teachers, as we have highlighted them. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are those that they can quickly move in and attend to the teachers. Issues of confirmation, mm -hmm. uh, issues of upgrade, and basically giving periodical, um, just disseminating information. Uh, teachers out there are left in the open and they don't know what is happening. So if 
government can be uh, deliberately informing, especially on upgrade. Uh, teachers are black, so we want government to openly give and state the position so that teachers will know that, okay, this year government is um, going to upgrade. This is where we have reached. Just as they have been announcing that they are going to employ, they should also be announcing that they are going to upgrade mm -hmm. and give a time frame. Otherwise, it will just become a song mm -hmm. and frustrating. Mr. Kamboy and Mr. Chipimu, I'd like to thank you very much for making an appearance on uh, this program. Thank you so much. We uh, have been talking uh, to Unit 2's Executive President, uh, Paul Chipimu, and the Director Technical and Research, Mr. Hebert uh, Kamboy, and they were discussing, we were discussing issues to do uh, with teachers and some of the challenges that they are faced with. We take another short break. And when we come back, we'll be getting into uh, the viewers' uh, reactions segment. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Join me, Amazing Katamanda, on the weekly gospel show for those exciting and interesting interviews with your favorite gospel And this time around, we are bringing to you entertainment news and the counter, as you guys are able to nominate your top three favorite music videos of the week. Remember, it's every Saturday at 10.45. You can also catch repeats every Monday at 10 hours. Come to TV, it's not just another time. Thank you very much. So that was the United Teachers Union of Zambia who were talking to us as regards uh, some of the challenges in the education sector and of course what they hope uh, to be done in order to address some of these uh, particular challenges. And of course they also did give us uh, their expectations in the 2024 national budget which will be presented to Parliament in the next two months or so. So on that note, we come to the end of uh, today's uh, lunch uh, cafe. Don't forget to join us again tomorrow as we bring to you another interesting and exciting uh, program. And uh, also, don't forget that tomorrow we will be discussing the issue of CDF and uh, the UPND as Secretary General uh, Batuke Imenda going and inspecting uh, the CDF project. We will be talking to uh, somebody from that particular office to explain why uh, they feel it is important for them to um, uh, 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 monitor the projects while the other stakeholders are saying this is not right, uh, the SG's office cannot. Join us tomorrow at the same time on behalf of the entire production team. Have a blessed day. <laughs>